Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a video on teaching English here in Vietnam. Um, before I get into the video, I guess I will tell you guys how I even like how Vietnam even came into the picture. So um, I initially was looking up South Korea because I know there are a lot of expats that actually move out to South Korea to teach English. And I had always wanted to come over to Asia and I'd never been before. So um, I was looking up um, South Korea and I found this program called the EPIC program. It's quite well known. I'm not quite sure if it's still even running as well as it, um, it was back in the day. But um, yeah, so I came across the EPIC program about a year ago and I was absolutely, absolutely obsessed. Um, I found this guy on YouTube called Alex Stevenson and he had a lot of videos on South Korea and the pros and cons um, day in the life of teaching in South Korea and I was like I want to go there but then I found out that you needed at least um, a bachelor's degree to teach English in South Korea so I was like damn I couldn't do it. Um, so fast forward a few months later I came across, um, or even weeks, I'm not quite sure, I came across one of his videos talking about Vietnam and I realised that you didn't have to, you didn't need um, a bachelor's degree to teach English here. So some jobs do require you to have a job, uh, sorry, a bachelor's degree and some jobs don't. So I was really happy, I, within a few weeks I booked my flight, I booked my TEFL course, um, for those of you that don't know what a TEFL course is, it's basically a course where you teach English as, uh, you learn to teach English as a foreign language. So um, yeah, I booked my um, TEFL course through him and the course was absolutely amazing. I think I'll do a separate video on my TEFL course experience because it was amazing. So yeah, I came out to Vietnam and I did the one month in class TEFL course. And we basically learned, I'm just going to tell you quickly a, a little bit about it. We learned um, how to teach from scratch, like literally from scratch. It was so good. We did observations and also um, we got to teach as well. Um, but yeah, so that's basically how I came across um, Vietnam. I mean, like the idea popped up to, into my head about Vietnam. I was absolutely obsessed, guys. First, I was obsessed with Korea, South Korea. And then when I found um, Alex's video on Vietnam, I watched every single video on YouTube. Like I never, I did, hardly slept. Um, I quit my job um, when I found after I like applied and stuff. I quit my job. I told my family. They thought I was crazy. My friend, friends thought I was a bit crazy. I even thought I was crazy, but. I was like, I am going, there's like not much for me here at home, I mean when I say home, I mean in London, I just want to do something that I enjoy and I'm getting to travel while I do it. So it just made sense at the time and plus you guys already know from one of my, I mean some of you know if you've watched my previous videos, the, um, the living costs here are extremely low. So like with the amount of money you make teaching it's a really good you get a really good salary and the the cost of living is really low so i i'm saving a lot of money so yeah i'm gonna get into like salary and how i found my job and my experiences and everything like that in just a bit um yeah i'm gonna tell you first like how i found my job so my job Job hunting in itself was a bit of a struggle, okay? <laughs> it was a struggle and I can't lie. Um, a lot of people online or on the internet make it out as if it's really easy to find a job here in Vietnam teaching English. But I think it's because, it's probably two things. Some people just find it easier than others and times are changing. It's not as easy as it used to be. Like before you could come over to Vietnam a couple of years ago and literally just get a job, no experience. Um, as long as you're, you are a native English speaker, um, the employers were like, great, you're hired, like you can start now, no lesson planning or anything. But times are changing, so it's more difficult now. They need quality teachers. They prefer teachers with um, in-class TEFL certificates because some people do the uh, online course, which they, you can still get a job for, from it, but employers do prefer the in-class TEFL certificate. Um, yeah, so anyway, I found it really difficult. I think it took, uh, after my course, so the course was four weeks, I think it took a whole nother month to find a job. 
And I forgot to say my TEFL course actually came with a guaranteed job offer. And the reason why I found it really difficult could have been because I don't have a degree, but it was also because the color of my skin. And I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm not gonna, I don't care if anyone gets offended because it is the truth. I had um, employers straight up tell me that you, we're really sorry we can't hire you because you're black and either the students might be scared or the um, it's not us we would love to employ you but we can't because the, the parents may um, they may be upset and blah 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 there's so many different stupid excuses and to some degree I do get it because like it's a level of ignorance but it was really like upsetting to know that I'm not getting jobs because of the color of my skin and um, one employee even said, um, some, here's some advice, like take your picture off your CV. And I was like, that doesn't really make sense because when I do rock up to the interview or the demonstration, they would see that I'm black. So that wasn't gonna help. Um, anyway, so my, like I said, my job, my TEFL course came with a guaranteed job offer. So um, my TEFL school, they put me through to the school I work at now, which I, oh, Ouch. <laughs> they put me through um, to the school I actually work out now and I absolutely love my job but it was a struggle like it was like pulling teeth to even get this job which was really annoying um, I the guy from the TEFL school put me through to the school um, we got in contact they told me straight away to come in for a demonstration which basically they provide you with uh, material and then you you go in and you teach. Some employers ask you to do half an hour, which mine was half an hour, um, which was really good. And other employers will ask you to do maybe an hour or an hour and a half or the whole lesson. It really depends on the employer. They're all different. Um, yeah, so I did the demonstration. I thought it went really well. After the demonstration, I had like an interview with three. By the way, my um, demonstration was actually to five of the... Um, managers which was really scary usually i mean sometimes they ask employers will ask you to do a demonstration in, with actual students but mine was with the managers so it was really tough and then i had like a, a interview with three of the managers but it still went really well i think it went really well i did activities and they were playing along um, did grammar and vocabulary in the demonstration and then in the interview they asked me how I would teach this and how I'd teach that and it went really well so um, a few days later I'd say a week after my interview I still hadn't heard from them and I contacted the guy from my TEFL school and I was like um, have you heard anything because I haven't heard back from the school and I feel like it went really well and he said he'd get in contact with them and the next day he got back to me and he was like oh I spoke to your school and um, I spoke to the school and they um, they said that um, they, they're going to put you on the schedule for the next week so I was really happy like I was I was really happy I thought I got the job yay I was celebrating I told my flatmate Lexi I got the job we went to the pool that day it was amazing so um, me um, bear in mind while um, I was waiting for this job and stuff I was still applying to jobs like don't I'm, I'm never gonna just reply on one like a hope like no so I was still applying um, to other jobs I think I applied to like 50 plus jobs and that's where that's where the, the racism stuff came in when there was just like straight like I mean straight out saying that we can't employ you because of this and that blah 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 but anyway a week went by um, I this time I contacted the school and said I haven't heard from you guys what's going on um, can you let me know please because I feel like it went really well and I actually really enjoyed um, teaching that class and I liked the school and everything and the salary was quite high um, yeah, so, oh yeah, by the way guys, if you come out to Vietnam, you should expect, for a non-degree holder, you should expect to be paid anywhere between 15 and $20 an hour, which is really good. Um, uh, everything here is quoted in either dollars or Vietnamese dong, it's, yeah, it's kind of annoying for us English people. But um, yeah, so you can, for a non-degree holder, you can expect to be paid 15 to $20 an hour. If you are a degree holder, I would say to expect anywhere from, 
I'd say 17 to 22 dollars an hour um, yeah it's not that much difference but I mean if you do private tutoring you can ask for more it just it really depends on the school or or the person doing the private lessons anyway so um, I contacted my school I'm rambling <laughs> I contacted my school at the school my school now and I was just like, hey, I haven't heard from you. What's going on? I was super professional in my email. And they got back to me saying, um, hi, blah, blah, blah. We're just discussing your case. Um, we will get back to you shortly. So I was like, what do you mean your case? I was really confused. I was like, what do you mean case? But I still didn't think anything of it. I was just like, whatever. If I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. I'm still applying to other jobs. So this is probably like three weeks after my actual demo. And this, uh, another week had gone by and I was like, I mean, I got an email and they asked me to come in um, and they said, oh, we'd like, to, I think it wasn't even like a congratulations, you got the job. It was like, can you come in, please? We'd like to discuss or have you sign your contract. It was really weird. It had been like, it was kind of like someone had quit and they just needed someone like right away. It was really weird. Anyway. I went in that day, I still was kind of unsure if they wanted to discuss something further or if I actually really got the job, but I went in and they were just like, here, sign your contract, everything's good, like, um, by the way, you're teaching two classes this evening. I was like, huh? <laughs> I was so confused because there was me, I had no, no idea like what, it was my, f apart from my TEFL course and doing some substitute lessons, I wasn't like, I had no idea how to do anything in the school. I wasn't sure about um, what material I'd be teaching. And yeah, but anyway, it went really well. I had two classes. The first class was with um, teenagers teaching pre-IELTS um, speaking. So that, that was really, it was really good. We had a topic, so there was a topic. The class was two hours long. Um, I have a book, so you follow a book and every week it's a different topic and you do like speaking activities with them so you speak as much as possible get the students to speak as well and if there's any corrections um, like pronunciation corrections that need to be made um, that needs to be done but um, it was a really good class that was the first class and then the second class was um, teaching a class of adults and it was only like three students I think three yeah three students and that was mainly as well speaking activities so I was also um, doing speaking activities and then pronunciation so the classes went really well and um, yeah so I got the job <laughs> and it was, it was just really weird up until this day I don't know what exactly happened um, and why they took so long to get back to me whatever but yeah I don't know but right now I've been working there for almost three months and I just passed my probation and I've been offered a full-time contract which I'm so happy about guys because my full-time contract comes with um, some good benefits because um, a lot of a lot of non-degree holders out here we kind of don't work in the like most legit way i don't know how to put it but you basically you get paid in cash if you have no degree this is for, i can't speak for everyone i'm going to speak about like my own situation and like my friends that i know that don't have a degree so you get paid in cash and if you did have a degree you'd get a work permit and a work permit just basically means you're working like you're, you're working the right way and you get you get a work permit which allows you to open up a bank account your money gets paid into your bank but anyway so I didn't have a work I don't have a work permit still so I get paid in cash but my full-time contract that's about to start soon we're just like negotiating salary and stuff right now but that comes with a work permit and I'm so happy I don't know if you guys saw my video um, I think like two videos ago I did a vid video on a tourist run a, uh, a visa run so every three months usually non-degree holders every three months you go to the border and renew your visa but when you get that work permit you don't have to do that so I am so happy and so grateful even though I didn't mind doing it but now if I don't need to do it like I'm, I'm happy <laughs> um, so yeah so like I said guys the pay is around 15 to 20 dollars for a non-degree holder so if you think about that a month like if you think about it 
how much you get in a month so you can get anywhere between hmm, what can I say you can get up to two thousand dollars basically a month which is amazing because I told you guys already my rent the total I pay pay a month is three hundred and fifty dollars so think about how much really you're saving a month it really is too good to be true and I think this is why a lot of people do come out to Vietnam I can't speak for everyone but you can still you can still work um, you can work and still make a really good amount of money and also um, the working hours are really good as well because back home everyone knows like you either work a full-time job is usually around 40 hours 38 40 hours some people work like 60 hours a week just to get by and London I'm from London London is super duper expensive so um, here you can make up to two thousand dollars a month and you can still have a bike um, Trans use if you want if you don't have a bike you can get I use uber and grab um, motorbikes to go to work so I call them every day probably twice or three times a day so you'd get you uh, use your money on transportation food food is so cheap here probably like from one dollar to two to five dollars a day like okay not a day on a meal but it's super duper cheap it's really good and um, going out as well and you'd still be able to save at least like like 500 like you could still save like around 500 dollars a month or even more it depends on the type of person you are so um yeah it's it's re it really is good and my i absolutely love my job i recently just got um some hours with um because right now oh yeah sorry i'm rambling so much you can the hours are really good so uh, it's usually 15, 15 hours a week for part-time, it depends on the school again, so 15 hours a week for part-time and full-time is only 25 hours a week guys. So there's so much time, there's so much you can do in your free time and because um, we teach English so it's usually either on the, in the evenings or on the weekends. So if you think about it, because the students usually go to Vietnamese, like their normal schools in the daytime and then come to English after school or in the evenings. And because all of the, most of the expats that do teach, we all teach the same hours. So the weekends become the weekdays and the weekdays become the weekends. It's really cool. And to know that everyone else is in like, most people are in the same situation. It's, it's yeah, it's amazing. And um, I'm looking down here because I made some notes. Um, yeah, um, one thing I must say is everyone's situation is different. Some people find it more difficult. Some people find it easier. I, I will say, honestly, that most employers do prefer Caucasian teachers because this is what the parents think is English. I have um, one of my students was telling me the other day that one of the Vietnamese teachers just couldn't understand the fact that I was um, British. Like there was a South African guy teaching, he was covering my lessons while I was on holiday and she just didn't understand that he was the one that was South, Af South African and I was British. Like she couldn't get her mind around it. So there is a level of ignorance here that you have to put up with but I'm, uh, I don't know, sometimes it's annoying, sometimes I get through it. Some schools require you to do lesson planning, some schools don't, my school does. Um, they, some schools provide you with books, my school does, other schools, some schools don't. So when I say books, I mean like a syllabus, some follow a syllabus, and some, some schools you have to provide your own material, it really does depend. And I work at a language center, so it's basically like an after school or weekend center where students come in, they can be young kids or really, I mean like working place adults, it really does depend. Um, yeah. Um, what else? Also, um, Vietnam is still developing. So in my school we have projectors we have whiteboards we even have interactive lessons so with some of my younger students we have some of the lessons that are actually like 
um, uploaded online so they can draw on the board, they can play games, sing-alongs and everything. But some schools literally will just have like a chalkboard. So um, be mindful of that. It's not, not everywhere has the best um, technology. Some schools don't even have printers and stuff. But um, I think I got really lucky to be honest with my job and it came through the TEFL course. So if you want to know what TEFL course I did, you can email me or I'll probably leave it down in the description box. I, yeah, I'll do a, I'll do a separate video on that because that TEFL course taught me so much guys and I really do recommend um, I really do recommend the in-class TEFL course versus the online TEFL course but yeah so far um, life in Vietnam has been absolutely amazing I'm I really love it I've been here for five months why did I say it like that I've been here for five months and it's been really good like I can't compare it to anything I've done so far. I've traveled in the past, but this is like a new adventure for me. And I really do advise anyone that's interested in, in, in teaching abroad, anywhere, it doesn't have to be Asia, it couldn't be anywhere, but do some research, look at the pros and cons, watch some videos. You won't really truly know what it's like until you come out to each country, but if you want, you can email me. I always reply to people because a lot of people actually do email me on Instagram or my like email. And yeah, they want to know what it's like and what to bring with them. I'm going to do some more videos, um, more sit down videos. And if anything comes to mind or if you have anything down, if you have anything, any ideas, you can write it down below in the comment section. By the way, it's my birthday in two months, guys. I'm gonna be 25. <laughs> I'm gonna be 25 in July. Do you guys have any suggestions of places that I should go here in Asia? Because I still wanna explore Asia while I'm here. Um, yeah, that would be really cool. If you could leave some suggestions down below or message me privately if you don't wanna leave a comment. And yeah, subscribe to my channel guys. There's gonna be a lot more videos and vlogs. I like doing travel vlogs or just like random vlogs here and there. And yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Bye. <laughs>